Once upon a time, in a faraway land called the Dominion of Canada, a great thing occurred. It was established with the uniting of the four provinces of West Canada, East Canada, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. Canada became a nation of its own. This broke down some tension between the English and French settlers within each of the provinces and set the country on a better path. And with the Union and the Confederation meeting came the electing of our first Prime Minister, a Scotsman named Sir John A. Macdonald. He had a dream of creating a nation that stretched from sea to sea. So, plans were made to expand the nation. Kind of like this. Okay, um, maybe not like that. Try something more like this. That's much better. And so it was that more and more land was either purchased or annexed for the grand nation of Canada. But when the annexing reached the west coast, specifically the province of British Columbia, a deal had to be made. A railroad would have to be built connecting British Columbia with the eastern provinces. The contract to create this railroad was signed in 1880 and construction began one year later in 1881. At the start of the project, matters weren't going very well. We were massively behind schedule, and at the end of the first construction season, we had no choice but to fire our project leader, replacing him with another project leader from the United States, a man who thought that he could do so much better than everyone else. Trouble is, he was correct and the addition of William Cornelius Van Horn to the project of the Canadian Railway construction really gave it the kickstart that it needed to put it on track. Within four years' time, the railroad was finally completed, and on November 7th, 1885, the final spike in the railroad was driven in. Sounds like a happy ending to a story of hardships and perseverance, correct? Well, not quite. For starters, during the four years of railway construction, a lot of people died. No one exactly knows the true amount of casualties there were during the construction of the railroad. There is, however, a saying that a Chinese worker died for every mile of that railroad that was built. To make matters worse, rebellions were also occurring in the prairie provinces of Canada. One such rebellion, led by a famous Métis leader, Louis Riel, became quite famous. For those of you who don't know, a Métis is a person who has one French parent and one First Nations parent. They suffered from the same hardships as the First Nations. They too were having their land seized from them for the railroad's construction. After a failed attempt at a petition, the rebels soon came to the conclusion that the only way to make the government listen to them would be through armed conflict. This branded them as traitors to their country. Think of it in a sense of the Métis approach the government and proclaim, You are violating our rights as Canadian citizens by taking away our land. It belongs to us. And the government says, I can do whatever I want. I am the government. So the Métis reply back, Fine, if you will not listen to the pleas of your citizens, perhaps you will listen to force. And the government replies back to them, It's treason, then. And from there, it only got worse. The ending was not much better either, especially for Louis Riel. And there you have it. A little piece of history for you. So much death and destruction put into creating a railroad to expand the nation of Canada. It makes you think to yourself, Was it truly worth it, all of this? I'd like to know what you think.